morning, everyone. Uh, today is the town council regular meeting, Wednesday, July 1st, 2020, uh, via go-to meeting. At this point, we will all say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The flag. The United the States, States of America. 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 To the Republic. To the Republic. Which stands. Which stands. One nation. One nation. Under God. God. Justice for all. Oh, that was interesting. I know, huh? Yeah. Uh, again, anybody who's on the call, if you can just go on mute, if you're not talking, that'll prevent a lot of the feedback that we get on these uh, on these calls. Uh, we'll move on now to visitors. Are there any visitors on the call that would like to be recognized? Any visitors that would like to be recognized? So uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be rec uh, recognized. Sam Gold from the Executive Director of River Cog. And, yes. uh, and our two interns, Aaron Lindsay and Katie uh, Fortin from the Sustainable Connecticut program. Great, thank you. Um, if nobody else, we'll move on to number three, which is the approval of the minutes from um, June 17th, 2020 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make that motion. Second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, next, we'll move on to number five, which are the appointments and reappointments. Uh, first up is the appointment of Jane Scully Welch. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, this is Christine Gupil. I'd like to ask for an adjustment in the schedule for the agenda of moving the sustainability charge and membership to directly after the discussion um, on the um, uh, sustainability after the presentation so that they're grouped together so that they we can have one conversation about them. Is there a motion to amend the agenda? That, that would be my motion. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, so the sustainable CT presentation then will be moved to um, was it right before the sustainable committee charge and membership? The, the motion was actually to move the sustainability committee charge uh, meeting directly after the presentation. So number okay. six would become number five. Okay. okay. So at this Thank point, you. we'll move to number Number four, which is a sustainable CT presentation. Uh, Sam introduced himself before, so he is here with his two interns, and they will be uh, presenting to us um, a little feedback on the sustainable CT. Uh, the town itself uh, registered to be members of the sustainable CT under the last administration. Um, and at this point, obviously, uh, the next agenda item will be an advisory committee that we'll put together on this. So uh, we'll have them speak to what sustainable CT um, you know, what they do and what they're uh, part of, and then we will move on to our discussion. So, uh, Sam, at this point, if you're or whoever else wants to speak on it, um, please feel free. So I'll kick it off and then I'll turn it over to our, our two capable, um, fellows. Um, uh, so, uh, once again, uh, uh welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, having us and, uh, and other members of the town council. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm, I'm the director of Rivercog, but I'm also a board member of Sustainable Connecticut, uh, which was founded about four years ago. And the, the, the idea behind Sustainable Connecticut is very similar to uh, the LEED uh, Green Building Certification. It's a voluntary program uh, with a list, a menu of, uh, of actions uh, that municipalities can take to become more sustainable. Uh, it's a program that is, uh, has really been embraced over the last four years. Um, uh, Aaron and Katie will tell you more about it in their presentation, uh, and uh, and we're uh, we're very excited to sort of to promote that uh, in our region. It's a way of in, in preserving and improving livability in your community. Uh, there actually might be ways of actually saving money for your town, and uh, and also as this program has been built, um, it uh, has provided ways of funding and support for towns 
wanting to take action on a number of these uh, issues. Um, so um, uh, I just wanted to uh, just give that shout out for the program uh, in my, my when I wear my hat as board member. So I'll turn it over to Aaron and Katie for their presentation. So thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Katie Fortin, and I'm a rising senior at Connecticut College. And this summer, I'm working for Sustainable CT through RiverCog. Hi, my name is Erin Lindsay, and I'm going to be a sophomore at UConn. I'm also a resident of Clinton. And today, we will be discussing the Sustainable CT program and all the benefits it can bring to Clinton. All right, so um, to kick off the presentation, Katie and I had prepared a presentation that um, was previously sent out and we made some al alterations to it. So it was more um, specific to the town of Clinton because we have already started work with them. So um, to begin, I can start by saying that Clinton has already done a variety of actions um, that fall under the sustain sustainable CT application. So what that means is that the town has basically completed um, a bunch of projects. Oh, there you go. Um, the town has basically completed a bunch of projects and um, the um, they've gotten recognition for it. So um, I can begin by um, talking about those. So um, first, um, Kate, uh, the town of Clinton has um, supported alt arts and creative culture. So what that means is that um, they completed the action within the last year. Um, through many efforts, including establishing an arts council and creating a resolution for an arts district. Um, the town has also uh, completed another action, which was integrating sustainability into the plan of conservation and development, um, where eight, eight or so sustainable concepts were added to the most recent um, POCD, which allowed for the implementation of sustainable practices. Um, Clinton has also um, assessed climate vulnerability, which was done in 2014 and a flood resiliency study was conducted by River Cog in 2017. Um, this was designed to provide municipalities with a better understanding of how their communities can be affected by climate change. Um, moving forward, the town has also supported zero emission vehicle development um, and deployment, which was um, the addition of a charging station on municipal property. And finally, the town has grown sustainable and affordable housing options. Um, which was when Clinton increased the amount of affordable housing units over the course of the last five years um, to 2.79% in 2018. So Katie and I wanted to start off by saying that um, although we recognize that the town has done um, much more than just these few projects, we're excited to work with the town to formally add them to the records. <laughs> Next slide, please. So, um, Katie, as Katie mentioned, there we go. So, as Katie mentioned, the presentation um, will begin by diving into an overview of sustainable CT, and then we'll discuss the various resources um, provided to the town by sustainable CT. Whoever's not speaking, mute themselves. There's a lot of feedback. So usually this slide is about pitching to a town that's not a part of a pro the program, but since Clinton is a part of the program, there are many benefits they can get from being a part of the program, including an organized and thorough list of actions that allows for flexibility from town to town, so the program can really be individualized to a town, a wide array of free resources, a certification program that recognizes your hard work, and a program designed by towns for towns to make them better for all residents. Next slide. Um, in order to fully touch on each aspect of the program, I will now read the vision statement as outlined by Sustainable CT. So Sustainable CT communities strive to be thrilling, thriving, resilient, collaborative, and forward-looking. They build community and local economy. They equitably promote the health and well-being of current and future residents, and they respect the finite capacity of the natural environment. Next slide. 
So Sustainable CT wants towns to achieve sustainability beyond just environmental sustainability. They believe in sustainability that supports local economies, the preservation and protection of natural resources, thriving arts culture, as Aaron mentioned, short-term and long-term planning, which is where um, relief and recovery plans from COVID come in, uh, diverse transportation systems, efficient infrastructure and operations, inclusive public services, affordable and accessible housing, and equity taken into account for all of these interests. This program wants towns to strive to be the best they can be. Next slide. Here's a brief summary outlining the process of becoming a sustainably certified community. First and foremost, a town needs to create a sustainability committee and pass a resolution on the town board and then register at Sustainable CT, both of which Clinton has already done. At this point, Clinton is currently going through the list of actions and uploading proof of projects that were previously conducted. Sustainable CT then recommends getting started on action 9.1, which is optimized for equity, since it is often the hardest to complete and is on the only required action. Step number five is the process of completing one project in each of the categories, which then leads to submission for certification. At this point, we are working on applying by April of 2021. Next slide. So looking at the certification cycle, an important takeaway is that this is a rolling program that allows for towns to get comments and help on their work twice a year. They encourage all towns to submit your application regardless if it is completed so you can check your work in progress. And one new part of the program is due to COVID and how this is consuming towns and all the work they do to help their residents and local businesses survive. They're extending the look back period, which is basically the period of time where an action can be used for your application, meaning that Clinton, when they apply in April 2021, they won't be penalized for applying because they'll have more time and therefore more actions that they can put towards this application. So this is a good thing. Next slide. So now we will discuss the many amazing resources Sustainable CT has to offer to towns. Next slide. Sustainable CT provides a variety of resources to the towns to try and assist in any way possible. The goal is to make the process run smoothly for towns involved in the program. We have categorized the resources into five, five main groups, which are one-on-one -on -one individualized support, free consulting services on topics such as equity, resilience, and energy, online monthly events, support from Katie and me, and funding from Sustainable CT, which Katie will touch more upon. Next slide. So for Sustainable CT, equitable communities, since equity is a very large part of the program, recognize the intrinsic value of each member and the need to connect with everyone, regardless of a person's race, gender, age, sexual identity, physical ability, or zip code. It is the duty of towns to embrace their diversity and make space at the decision table for everyone in their towns. We ask you all to consider these two questions. What communities are in your town and how do you include them in decision making? Next slide. Equity is one of the top, toughest and arguably most timely topics in the program. Sustainable CT recognizes this and provides two main resources to help towns begin the process of improving their communities. Upon request, a trained professional can be assigned to a town to work on individual town goals and visions at no cost to the town. This year, Clinton has been given the opportunity to work with Eric Ray, and we're all very excited to get started. The Equity Toolkit is a step-by-step -step guide designed to encourage inclusion and co-creation in towns. These resources are designed to aid municipalities in the process while still allowing local communities to take charge in these actions. Next slide. Another important source of support is the Community Match Fund. Through using an online crowd fundraising website, groups in your town can submit a project proposal to Sustainable CT that broadly falls under its mission statement. And once approved, Sustainable CT will match donations up to a certain limit. This is a free resource for all towns that are registered to the program, which means anyone in Clinton can use it that allows for towns to do the creative work without the usual financial constraints of projects. This fund allows for innovation, collaboration, and progress. Next slide. 
At this point, I would like to reiterate the importance of the program. The Sustainable CT program has allowed the town an opportunity to be recognized for their great work. Having lived here my whole life, I am proud of how this community has grown and I'm excited to see how the town will continue to invest in the future of its residents. Becoming a sustainable community is not something that can happen simply by signing one resolution. The town needs to continuously strive to be forward looking and resilient. Your support in our work is crucial to the process and we hope you can see why these efforts are so important. Next slide. Thank you all for your time. Um, please feel free to reach us at these emails. We can be sure a copy of this PowerPoint is sent to everyone if they have any questions about anything we spoke about. Um, and yeah, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I, I have a couple questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than our membership fees that we pay to River Cog, and I think you said this, are there any co other costs that uh, will affect the town? And secondly, are there other communities uh, nearby that we could look to as models who have done this and have had great success with it? Mm -hmm. Sustainable CT is a completely free program. Towns don't have to buy into it or anything, and they don't even provide any funding for it. That all comes from um, like nonprofit organizations and community foundations. So there's no cost to it for sustainable CT. River Cog's a different situation. And yeah, there are plenty of towns within River Cog that are a part of Sustainable CT. I can name a few, Essex, Old Saybrook, Durham. Um, Aaron, you're from the region, you might remember. Yeah, sure. Um, so on the um, Sustainable CT through the program, um, Katie and I work with all of the towns in the region. So um, like Katie mentioned, um, Old Saybrook, Old Lyme, um, Essex, Durham, and we're working right now um, with trying to include Killingworth in the program. But um, other than that, we work with all of the towns and on the Sustainable CT website, you can look at um, other projects that towns in the region have done. So we can um, use those to try to um, think of ways that Clinton can um, work with either with them or um, similarly to the way that they have previously um, worked on projects. And, and, I, and I can add to that in that, um, so I have acted as a reviewer for Sustainable Connecticut. And uh, when a town submits its application, uh, it, submits, um, it submits evidence, proof of uh, plans, documents, other things that show the actions that they have, they have taken. All those documents are publicly available and uh, in their application folder. So if, um, if you want to find a good example of a uh, of a town uh, mobility plan for your your senior citizens, or you want to you want to find examples of some of these uh, actions, um, all that information is there, and it's on the Sustainable Connecticut website. So, uh, and they and towns um, uh, uh, much smaller than Clinton and cities much larger than Clinton have all participated. So you have a great breadth of examples um, that that were when we set this program up, it was intended to facilitate. Uh, sharing between towns, so uh, so uh, you know you can find out. Oh, this is how Old Saybrook addressed the same issue. Oh, look, here's a copy of uh, their uh, of their documentation of how they did it. And mm -hmm. um, and so the uh, the idea here is to do facilitate um, sharing of information uh, and best practices across the state. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the uh, committee. There. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, during your presentation here, not just a couple minutes ago, there was something about, well, Clinton wouldn't be penalized because extension of some kind of date in September of 21. Uh, I don't like, I don't like to hear the word, uh, penalize. What, what kind of penalty would we, what are we talking about here? Sorry, that was a miss. Spoke, a misspoken word on my point. I don't think penalty is the right word, but pretty much sustainable CT knows that towns have a lot to deal with and take on right now because of COVID and worrying about their school systems and local businesses. So they do not blame towns and they can understand why towns aren't applying in this certification cycle, which is why they're extending the look back period. So work that towns do right now in this moment will count for a longer period of time including in the April 2021 application cycle. 
Yeah, so if I can speak more to that, um, the way that the program works is you apply, the town can apply um, for certification. And to do that, they need to, like Sam was saying, um, provide supporting documents that show, basically show proof of projects that have been done within the town. Um, and each of those specific projects has um, what's called a look back period. So that means um, during, in previous years under normal circumstances, um, for example, if you wrote in the plan of conservation and development that you use sustainable practices, you have something like a five year look back period, which means that if you completed it in 2014, say it might not count this year, but if you had completed it in 2015, it would have counted which that basically means is that you just have to renew whatever you had done. Um, but because of COVID, um, Sustainable CT has extended all of those look back periods, which means that, um, like Katie was saying, a town um, will still get recognition, even if it was with at, falls out of the normal um, span of time that is given. And uh, I have another question. How does our plan of conservation and development help guide some of the work that you do, or, or does it? Sure, yeah. So um, Katie and I have actually um, already started looking through the town's plan of conservation and development. And that is actually um, plays a very crucial role in the program because, um, like I previously said, um, Clinton has been recognized for their plan of conservation and development because it does include sustainability practices and sustainability um, uh, like vision statements and ideals. So the town has been recognized for it, but we're continuing to use it to look at um, all of the different ways that Clinton has um, implemented these practices because there are multiple ways that the town can get credit other than just writing it down in the plan of conservation and development. So that's actually what Katie and I are currently doing um, for the town. We're going through the the um, POCD, and we're looking at, um, basically we're just looking to find documentation for all of the things the town has done. Um, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a question. Um, I'm looking over the sustainability um, agreement that is next, or is part of this uh, conversation coming up. Is this an appropriate time to ask a question about the interaction here or should I wait until that um, comes up under the sustainability committee charge and membership? I think we should wait till we address the draft under the next line item. I mean I'm sure they'll still be here so if we can you know they'll okay. be available for some questions that we may have at that point. Well there's so. a topic that they have not discussed that is in the charge to the sustainability committee and I want I was I hope they will stick around so we can get their thoughts on that as well. Thank you. Does anybody I'm else done. have any questions? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Well, at this point, I want to thank Sam, obviously, and Aaron and Katie for coming on and explaining all this to us. This is a great help to us, uh, obviously, as a new council. A lot of us haven't been aware of um, kind of how this was set up under the previous administration, so it gives us the ability to look at this in a different light and to move forward with some good things for our town. Um, and again, we welcome you to stick around so that under our next line item, uh, we're you know, be addressing a draft for an advisory committee on sustainability to kind of just give us a clear vision of kind of what we're gonna be doing going forward. Thank you. All right, so now we will move on to uh, sustainable committee charge and membership. Um, so now that the council Obviously under the uh, previous administration, this was set up under that administration and, and they made the efforts to, to move forward with this. This now falls under the town council um, under the new form of government. So at this point, we just wanna kind of put something and put a draft together so that there's some um, responsibilities and charges that this committee will undertake as we move forward with this so that we kind of know that we're all on the same page here and what we're all working towards together. Um, so at this point, I will, everybody has a copy of the draft. Um, so at this point, um, we can maybe just look at uh, discussing this. Uh, if anybody has any questions on this before we read the draft and look for a motion to approve um, the Advisory Committee on Sustainability. So does anybody have any so questions moved. up front? Well, don't we have the questions after it's moved and 
seconded for discussion. I, I just open it up, uh, you know, at the beginning to see if anybody, you know, that, that read it through had any questions up front. So with uh, all right, everybody's good with well, that. I mean, may I, I, may I ask? Them? Okay, so my questions are the um, the steps that regard um, an ongoing issue that Clinton has with our waste situation. Um, part of the charge of the sustainability um, committee is, let me get down to this here, uh, bah, 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 bah. review the sustainable, okay, recommend strategies to balance environmental protection, economic development, and social objection objectives. Recommendations should include time frame and budget impacts. Um, Evaluate other recycling initiatives to increase general awareness and handling of other wastes. Now, this wasn't part of the presentation, um, and this definitely expands the um, the charge of the Sustainability Committee because this is a very big topic for us right now. The costs of this um, uh, maintaining the program that we currently have are going to get extraordinary very soon. So we're hoping to um, engage in some discussions of what the costs and benefits are. And I'm just wondering if the these um, young ladies feel that this is part of the um, project of their topic, of their scope, um, or what is your feeling about including that in the document that approves and forwards your sustainability committee and what are your attitudes towards this um topic in general uh, mr chair i i can try to address that okay thank you just um well first of all a sample connecticut will touch upon all sorts of areas uh um uh, that uh you know that, that uh, things that happen in the town. So uh, waste management, recycling, um, is something which a sustainable uh, Connecticut uh, committee would 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 come up with recommendations for. It, um, uh, the town council wouldn't be giving them authority over anything. Uh, just uh, uh, just as part of this program, they uh, they could do the work of doing uh, coming up uh, with research and figuring out what other towns are doing with proposals. Uh, and and that would be up to the town council to pursue um, the issue of Mira uh, and the issue of uh, garbage in the state is a big one. Um, um, I, I think Clinton's a Mira town, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so with the uh, with the issues up in Hartford, um, uh, it it is it is unclear what's going to happen. Um, our, uh, our region's representatives on the Mira board are Ed Bailey of Middlefield and Carl Fortuna of Old Saybrook. Uh, they reported at the last COG meeting on this issue. Um, it, it looks like uh, that facility in Hartford could be shutting down uh, at some point. And, uh, and it looks like our, our options right now are to reduce the uh, to reduce the waste that we are generating to a level that might be able to be um, accommodated at some of the other waste energy plants um, that are in Connecticut. There's uh, something in, uh, in Killingly. There's a plant in Bristol. They may have a small amount of capacity. And then, if we exceed that capacity, we're shipping it out of state. Um, so, uh, and and trucking uh, trucking garbage out of state is expensive and uh, and and unreliable because that, that uh, a state could turn us off and say no, no more deliveries. So, um, uh, it, it, I think what a sustainable uh, Connecticut committee could work on is looking at best practices of how you can try to reduce your waste volume to try to get uh, get some of these costs under control. Um, uh, th those uh, those efforts could include um, encouraging people to compost, encouraging people to recycle, uh, and uh, and other steps to reduce the amount of garbage they throw away. Um, um, the uh, state uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection has been um, has has been a lot uh, emphasizing a program that has been implemented in some towns called Pay as You Throw, where uh, where you can do it by bag or by volume, and that uh, you pay less if you generate less garbage, um, so, and so making you make it, um, you make it uh, 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 in some in some parts of the country, uh, you get it, uh, you 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 own garbage won't be picked up in certain bags. 
and those bags will have a fee associated with them that will pay for their disposal costs. So there's an economic incentive to reduce waste. So those are some of the items. Um, but once again, uh, this committee wouldn't uh, wouldn't set policy for the town. Uh, that would be up to the town council um, to, to do that. Okay, I brought it up because it's part of the, part of the um, process that we, I mean, it's definitely a significant topic as far as we're, con as far as I'm concerned for Clinton. So I just wanted to be sure you're aware of the of the scope of that discussion. Thank you. And I obviously am convinced you are. So thank you. Thanks, Carol. Thank you, Sam. Okay. If there's any not any other questions, then I guess we can move forward and uh, Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Dennis. Now here on the bottom it says uh the committee membership shall be appointed by the town council and be comprised of seven resident electors of the Clinton to serve, uh, did I hear early in the presentation that there was already a committee established? There, I, I don't, we were trying to look for something uh, that we could kind of wrap our heads around as far as the advisory committee um, uh, charge. We couldn't find anything, but there was a group that had gotten together and there were people that were involved in that. And we were, we were provided a list of names of people that were involved on that. I guess Christine can speak more to this um, as it was set up under her administration. So there was a um, charge by the Board of Selectmen and there were people appointed to this committee. Um, they have been extremely effective in moving forward the sustainable uh, CT program within our town and they should be commended for the amount of energy that they put in to making sure that we actually start to tick off some of those boxes. Um, and move towards certification. Um, that's essentially where we are. Um, we were one of the, you know, first towns, not the first, but one of the first towns to jump on the program when it first um, was established by the state. So I'm confused. Do we have a committee already in place or do we not have a committee in place? That's we do have a committee of six people that were appointed by the Board of Selectmen actual participation in the committee is expanded beyond those six to include people that do not seem to have been appointed by the board of selectmen or by the town council so this is trying to formalize the structure of who is on and who is not on the committee okay i'll go further so if we approve this like this who are the members of this committee are we making them the new committee or do we now go through the process of electing seven or uh appointing seven new people I, i'm i don't understand this mr kilduff that's up to the council because it's a council appointment you have six people that have been working uh, and providing a level of service to the town on this particular topic so it would make some sense to reappoint those six Based on the minutes of the Board of Selectmen, those six were uh, Abe Moran, Tim Buckley, Eric Bergman, Carrie Allen, Paul Gebauer, and Katie Zadak. Um, you have a seventh to fill just because normally you don't have odd numbered groups instead of even numbered. So it's really up to the council. But yeah, I think you just heard from uh, Christine, you've had some people that have been committed to working on this, and it would make sense to keep that institutional knowledge involved. This is Christine Gupil again. I believe Kate Zadek did resign from the committee. Um, we'd have to go back through um, work with the, the town clerk and double check that. Um, so I believe that is open currently. We know it. Okay, Dennis, just so you understand. So basically what we're doing is this charge is now falling under the town council. And as such, we are just putting kind of, you know, putting it back together so that the council now uh, is involved in this is involved in the process the membership obviously we will look into the town council will need to set the membership uh, that's something that falls under our preview now and then so we'll handle this going forward so that's what this um, draft on the advisory committee of sustainability does and obviously um, you know going forward it will be handled by the town council mr chairman this is tim yes Tim. yep are you planning to 
uh, establish this membership today, or is this something you're looking to complete at a future date? Uh, it was my feeling today that obviously we've been given a whole bunch of different names. Like Carla just mentioned, there were six and then one might have left. So at that point, I was looking forward to just uh, make a motion to approve this Advisory Committee on Sustainability. And then at our next meeting, put together the, the seven members. Because I think at the point that, you know, there should be some, um, you know, some different membership. I mean, obviously, it should be going out so that people, if people are interested in getting involved, they have the ability to get involved. Uh, these people that will be appointed will be appointed to a two-year term. So, um, you know, the last make, committee was... Can I can, make a suggestion, Mr. Yep. Chairman, that we contact the other individuals that were on the previous committee and find out if they're still interested in, in being a member? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not beating this horse to death here, but I just want to make sure I'm clarified. So, in other words, we're actually just approving the uh, the establishment of this committee, but then we will appoint at our next meeting or uh, the actual members of this committee. That is correct. All right, because I'd like to know. I mean, Mr. Kildoff read off. A whole bunch of names real quick and you know i just like to get an idea of who who the previous people were and okay that's fine i that's clear dennis this, this is point? dennis this is christine Gupil. there are people who participated because of an interest in um the committee but didn't necessarily serve as membership on the committee I myself participated as ex officio as the first selectman over the past two years. So I am not actually on the committee any longer. I am just a, a public member attending the meetings. I understand that. And I'm not, again, I'm not here to, all I want to know is who appoints these seven people. I guess it's us, town council. And I just wanted to make sure that the prior, whoever they are, whether they're active, inactive, they, they're on the committee or not, where they automatically on this committee, I see now that they're not, that we will appoint a seven person committee, which I'm fine with uh, if this uh, resolution passes. It's just a little confusing that, you know, supposedly we already had done all this and now we're redoing it, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with what I've heard so far, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to move the motion if it's possible. Yeah, just one quick thing. The only reason we're doing this is because it does now fall under the town council. So that's basically what we're doing. That's all. I got it. So, Ed Carroll. I would just like to move the motion. I'll second that. Okay. Any other further discussion? All in favor of accepting the Advisory Committee on Sustainability Draft as uh, a committee? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. So again, next meeting we'll work through the membership and we will contact current members uh, to make sure that they still have an interest in this going forward. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. everyone. Again, thank you, Sam, Katie, and Aaron again for all your help. Thank you. Okay, thank All you. Right. All right, we'll move on now to appointments and reappointments. Um, at this time, Jane Scully Welsh, unaffiliated, um, is looking to be appointed to the Human Services Advisory Board for a term until 6 30, 2023. Do I have a motion for that? No, so we'll, Mr. Chair, can I ask a quick question? Uh, sure. Are there any statutory requirements for the membership of uh, of this particular board? I, I heard from someone, I can't remember who it was, that the constitution of the board needs to be um, from a police, from the police, a police uh, representative, uh, someone from the schools. Is there anything, does Carl know anything about any kind of state statute requirements? I mean, obviously Jane would be the person for this, but uh, where do we stand with that? Yeah, there are a series of requirements. Uh, it doesn't seem as if in recent history you've met those requirements. 
Um, we also have a disconnect between the town ordinance and the town charter. Uh, so the town charter would have to be the controlling document at this point. Uh, but the way state statute lays out is that there shall be one member, at least one member who is 21 uh, at the time of appointment, one member who is representative of the school system, one member who is representative of the police department, and one member who is a representative of a private youth serving agency. Uh, the youth and police representatives can be liaisons, non voting members. At least one third of the total membership shall be individuals who are interested in youth services and receive less than 50% of their income by delivering services to the youth. Now, Carl, if we don't meet those requirements, does that, uh, does that uh, prohibit us from certain types of grants? Uh, and the way it's been described is either you meet these or you get a waiver, and clearly the town's been using a waiver because we've received funding from the Department of Education to this end. Uh, your membership does check the box of at least one third of total membership being individuals interested in youth services who receive less than 50% of their income by delivering services to youth. I know there's an effort in process right now to get somebody from the board, uh, from the school system to participate, as well as somebody from the police department to participate. Great, thank you. So there was a motion. We have a motion. I made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any other further discussion? Uh, this is Christine Goupil again. Um, this committee has really been struggling of late with um, getting some leadership on it and moving initiatives forward. Um, I know Kelly Edwards has been phenomenal in trying to um, make some headway there, and so has some of the advisory boards. Um, within the town that work through the school system. So I hope that we can make sure this committee is not yet just another um, committee that talks and actually has some action behind it um, and, and does some good for the community that way. Well, I think if anyone's the definition of action, it's Jane. Yeah. Jane has a hand in everything and is an is a mover, a shaker, a doer. Jane gets things done, and in that regard, I think she'd be a very um, vital member of this board. I agree with those comments one hundred percent, Carol. And as far as and as far as the actions in the, these committees uh, that they you know. That they get involved in and they pursue that would be up to the committee themselves i mean so people that want to come forth and want to get involved in these committees obviously feel that they'd be a good asset to uh, the board of commission that they that they join so um you know i don't think there's any pressure or anything as a town council that we can pursue and say that you need to do this or you need to do that that falls into into the lap of the councils i mean into the boards and commissions that we that we have and we need to feel comfortable with our appointees to those boards and commissions. If hearing no other comments, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, we will now move on to reappointments. Um, as we did at the last meeting, uh, as these are reappointments, I will look for a motion uh, to do all of these under one motion to approve uh, the following reappointments. Sandra Allen, Design Review Board, term until 6-30-23. John Allen, Design Review Board, term until 6-30-23. Bob Warner, EDC, term until 6-30-24. Roy Sullivan, Fish and Games Constables until 6-30-22. Lisa Anaskovich, Human Services Advisory Board until 6-30-23. James Nori, Inland Wetlands Commission until 6.30.24. Tom Riccio, Shellfish Commission until 6.30.22. And Mike Schaub, Public Works Commission until 6.30.24. Is there a motion to approve all of these reappointments? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any, any comments? All no, it's an excellent list. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any opposed? I will abstain from the point, uh, the reappointment of Lee Janiskovich to the Human Advisory Board. Thank you again. All right, we will move on to now the HAL 
uh, Harold Dolan legacy statement. Um, so full disclosure, I'd like to make a comment before we move into this. Um, this was an action that was brought forth to me by Christine, um, who wanted to make a formal request that we add to the agenda item to the next council meeting uh, that she could read a legacy statement into the record on the passing of Hal Dolan. Uh, Matt Kennedy, chairman of the WPCC, and I will be writing a statement. Um, I responded back to Christine that that was a great idea on behalf of the town council that is so, uh, for someone who has given so much to the town as a public servant. Um, this had gone back and forth. We we're trying to get a draft together. Um, Christine, I don't know, just didn't want to respond to some of the emails that I sent her looking to respond to putting a draft together. Um, so then one of the things I did ask for at the beginning was that we add Carol to this uh, group that was going to prepare a statement as somebody that worked with Hal, has known Hal for many years. Uh, so eventually it came down to there was a draft put together and that was what was presented to the full town council. We all had the time and the opportunity to review it. Um, I did hear back from Christine this morning uh, that she thought that Matt Kennedy should be the one to read this into the record. I certainly don't have a problem with that at all. Um, if Matt is, I see Matt is here. I'd like to welcome him in. I don't even know Matt. Do you, I just got this email recorded at eight this morning. So I hate to put Matt on the spot, but I don't know if you have a copy of the final draft, Matt. I don't know if I have a copy of the final draft. I have the one that was with the agenda, Chris. Is okay. that uh, that's uh, the one. The one we're talking about? The one? Okay. That's the one. Sure. So at this point, we'd like to welcome Matt Kennedy from WPCC and ask him to read the legacy statement on behalf of Hal Dolan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about somebody who I cared about and uh, loved very much and witnessed a lot of what he did for the town. So uh, I will uh, I'll start at the top here. Uh, it is with great sadness that the town marks the June 14th, 2020 passing of an outstanding citizen, tireless volunteer, friendly tree farmer, lifelong learner, and a man of integrity and wit, Harold K. Hal Dolan Jr. Hal served in the Marines during the Korean War and was proud of attending the University of Connecticut on the GI Bill. Hal's commitment to making Clinton a better place to live began a few years later in 1962 when he and his young family set down roots at their colonial Kelsey Town farm, uh, farmhouse. While raising their four children with his beloved wife, Joanne, Hal found times to be a hands-on volunteer. Uh, and that's hands-on in quotes. But, uh, in many various areas of town, he'd fondly recall being part of ragtag parts and park and rec department many years ago that built parts of a football field by hand and as being a founding member of the Clinton Touchdown Club and charter member of the Clinton Country Club with Joanne. His hands-on volunteering approach was near legendary as chairman, member, and most recently member emeritus of the town's Water Pollution Control Commission, WPCC. With the WPCC, Hal was a key author in writing policies and ordinances that have resulted in cleaner groundwater and waterways in Connecticut. He was committed to public participation and transparency in government and worked hard with this commission to keep politics out of public service. As an example, he was known throughout the state for asking direct but fair questions to engineers and PhD research scientists, as well as politicians and state of Connecticut regulators. And he never failed to take detailed notes to share with his WPCC commission members. Hal organized countless WPCC field trips to university research facilities and the private research facilities of other innovators in the field to help educate himself, his fellow commissioners, and the townspeople. Rain or shine, Hal oversaw every test pitting, soil boring, and load testing investigation completed by WPCC engineers throughout the town. Hal was a driving force behind the recent formal closure of the town's septage lagoons and was a contributor and outspoken proponent of the town's wastewater facilities plan that was recognized by the state as being both innovative and focused on the unique challenges faced by the town of Clinton. Hal never gave up on championing the goal of cleaner groundwater, sustainable wastewater treatment, and an aggressive plan for addressing wastewater issues, of which he reiterated 
with fire in his eyes would only be complicated, more complicated and costly if we were to kick the can down the road, in Hal's words. For those reasons and more, I would like to recognize Harold Hal Dolan for the thousands of hours and years of unwavering commitment, energy, and drive that he gave to make the town of Clinton a better community. And that's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you for everybody that had input in putting that letter together. And again, we, um, we have we full agreement with all the work that Hal's done for this town. Thank you, Matt. I know that was so heartfelt, Matt, and I really appreciate you doing that. He'll be missed. Thank you so much, sir. Right. We'll now move on to um, the chairman's report. Um, so a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, there's been some talk about the senior center again popping up. So um, I actually uh, will kind of try. I mean, I know we were talking about it before, but then sort of fell to the wayside once uh, COVID came around and, we're, and it's making it very difficult for us to put sort of committees together so people can uh, get together and talk about uh, some of the stuff that we would like to try to do moving forward. So I will work towards um, putting something together for the next meeting so that we could try to put together, not necessarily, I mean, it is a committee, but a, a more directed committee as far as what we need to know as it relates to the senior center uh, and what we really need as a town uh, to provide to the citizens, uh, you know, with a center. So I'll work on that uh, and that'll be on the agenda for the next, uh, the next meeting. Um, some of the other uh, issues that kind of popped up also that I'm sure people are aware of, I don't know if other members got calls about it was the beach entrance. Um, unfortunately, we cannot shut off the town beach to non-residents. Uh, people felt that we should be just allowing our own residents into the into the town beach. Unfortunately, we cannot do that. Uh, so there are fees that are higher for non-residents. Um, and so, you know, we just have to kind of deal with that going forward. We know that the surrounding beach is all kind of closed down and shut down early. Uh, but again, it's unfortunate, but we cannot shut down our our town beach to out of town residents. Uh, we could just charge a fee, which we do, which is higher than what it would be for our citizens to enter the beach. So those are a couple of the things that popped up. And now I will, um, I'd just like to go through and, and read and, talk and speak to communications about how the communication process works in the town. There's been some conversation and some talk about how under our new form of government, things should be working and about um, who's delivering messages to the public. So I will kind of read something that I put together that hopefully people can understand. Um, that as a town, we function via our town charter. This is new to everybody. It's a learning process to everybody, but you know we wanna make sure that everybody has the right message and the right information um, as we go forward. So um, at our first meeting, uh, everyone on this town council received a copy of the town charter. Town Charter dictates our form, how our form of government is run, and it lists the responsibilities for the town manager, the town council, and the town chairman. The reason a charter exists is to prevent any one individual from making decisions or doing things without oversight or, and prior consent. I strongly suggest that our council members make it a point to bring a copy of the charter to your prospective uh, party chairs, who in turn can relay accurate messages to party members on how a town manager, town council form of government operates. Please understand, I don't make the rules, I follow the rules that are set forth in our town charter. Things seem to be getting lost in translation, where a small group is wondering why the town manager is not more vocal. The simple answer is the town manager is hired to run a town as much as a CEO would run a corporation. His interaction is with department heads and town hall employees and the finances of the town, amongst other things. The town chairman is, quote unquote, the ceremonial head of the town, which comes directly from our town chart. From the first meeting, I discussed how important communication would be and that we needed to make sure we communicated what we were doing with the public. Any specific comments I make or have already made on town issues are released only after I have a conversation with a specific department head or the town manager. As town chair, that is the responsibility set forth in our town charter. I don't think anyone can have an issue with the fact that the council is doing a terrific job communicating with the public. So I guess the group that has, come, has some concerns would have concerns not with 
what is being communicated, but who is delivering the message. That is purely, purely a political issue. I also question why some people feel it is acceptable for a council member to, to read a proclamation on behalf of the town at a public event and also announce at the same event it will be brought to the council and to the police department. No one member of the council has the, the authority to speak on behalf of the town without first addressing the comments with the town council. And to be clear, that is what our charter dictates. This isn't finger pointing. This isn't how any town council form of government would operate in regards to communicating with the public. Communication is always responding, is also responding to emails, asking for one's opinion, sometimes repeatedly, and receiving no response back, yet telling other people they're not being heard. There's a big push for this change to a town manager, town council form of government to eliminate the politics. Yet here we are six months in, dealing with nothing but finger pointing, worrying about who was communicating to the public, and comments being made to the public, made, I'm sorry, being made to people in town that are flat out inaccurate. I for one do not want to spend my time answering he said, she said questions that are simply political in nature and supplying emails to the paper to verify my comments. We are elected to serve the people of Clinton, not fight little political battles that prevent us from doing what our charter dictates we should be doing. We should be above the political bitterness at this point and start working together as a group. We do not always have to agree on decisions we make, but we should be unified in the support of those decisions once they have been made. Our town deserves better. At this point, I will ask Carl to say a few words, so it be on record again to how Carl feels that um, things should operate also under this new form of government that we have. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure there's much more I can add on beyond uh, what Chris said. The chairman is the voice of the town council and should be speaking from a policy perspective. The manager responds to administrative functions of the town and that's my, my level of messaging. I think you see that in media reports. We're talking about details on the budget. We're talking about details on the mechanics of how town works. Uh, the manager is speaking. When we're talking about policy issues. The chairman of the council is speaking. As I pointed out a long time ago, it seems, uh, in my interview, uh, there might be some value in having the town council get together uh, in a goal setting session to come together as one body, uh, focus on one agenda to drive the community forward. Um, that is something that may be of value, but requires time and probably works better than in person than in a Zoom meeting. Uh, unfortunately, this forum perhaps curtailed the ability to have that as an opportunity for the council to get together and focus on issues of common concern. Thank you, Carl. Uh, at this point, we will move on to uh, the town manager's report. Uh, so you have my report as submitted in writing. Um, so just to pull up some highlights on it, uh, the financial controls that were put in place to monitor cash flow uh, will continue into the beginning of this fiscal year. Uh, the key measure point is to look at what the uh, revenue collection looks like when we get to the end of July uh, in terms of how that compares to the years prior and where our collections are and theoretically how many people would be uh, taking advantage of the low interest program. Uh, so we really need to see where we stand on the, at the end of July for collections before uh, further decisions made to either loosen up some of those financial controls or to uh, tighten them up further to make sure the town's cash flow goes forward. Uh, I did give you an update on uh, at the last meeting verbally in terms of what happened at the CCM Legislative Committee, which was held vir uh, virtually like this. Uh, subsequently, there's been some advocacy from CCM flagging the uh, lack of distribution coming out of the out of Hartford for some of the Federal CARES Act funds, which were supposed to be going to local governments. Uh, the expectation is that some of that is going to be used to offset expenses associated with schools opening in the fall, uh, so that there is a source of recent funds to uh, aid every school district in what it has to do to reopen. Uh, Dave, you talked about what happened at the COG meeting. You received a presentation on sustainable CT. Uh, I don't want to steal Dennis's thunder, but I have been in uh, discussions with Marianne on this Joel and Elliot 
roof project, trying to get that to move forward, and also uh, in picking up on some of the theme. Human Services Advisory Board uh, have had conversations with them. They are resetting their bylaws uh, as with the new membership trying to get control over what they do. They're trying to make sure that their scope is expansive and includes everything they're responsible for, which includes family related services, senior related services, and, and the rest. So there is more to that group than just youth issues. And we had a conversation about performance measures that might help the commission better understand what the department is doing and what the staff are doing uh, in terms of either quarterly or annual reports that would speak better to what they're actually accomplishing and help the commission move forward with tracking activities. Thank you, Carl. On to number uh, 10, which is the Town Council Committee Liaison Reports. Anybody have any updates that they'd like to tell us? Yeah, I have um, a quick update. Go ahead, Errol. Uh, the, yeah, the Inland Wetlands Commission oh, will okay. reconvene on July 7th after a fairly long layoff for obvious reasons. And then tonight, the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission will have a, a Regulations Committee uh, meeting, fairly important. And then, according to my notes, they will have their regular meeting on July 6th, uh, looking at some amendments to the zoning regulations, section 14, uh, concerning vendors. Uh, that is a that's a public hearing. Thank you, Eric. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, yeah just real quick, Mr. Kilduff uh, was correct. Uh, we moved right along. And yesterday we did have a, uh, Roofing yeah. committee meeting over at the uh, Board of Education yeah. General Big Conference Room, and uh, I tell you, I can't wait for us to all get back together uh, again like that in a room. Uh, I'm hoping we can do that shortly, uh, Mr. Chairman. But anyway, uh, yes, we did act on that uh, hiring of a clerk of the works for the project, and. Uh, as Mr. Kilduff said, we are moving along right on schedule. Thank you, Dennis. Anybody else? I can. Can I just make one comment about uh, these virtual meetings? Um, I, they're they're interesting. They're always interesting. But I overheard a comment the other day in the land use office that one of the engineers that does a lot of work in Clinton was saying that by virtue of these virtual meetings, he's able to attend four meetings a night now. And there is no charge for travel time. And for when you're paying a consultant for an hour's drive on each side of a meeting, that um, that adds up and if we can save money by uh by zooming in our consultants or lawyers or anything else um i'm all for setting up a computer in the middle of a table when we're all getting back to regular meetings and uh, i know they appreciate it too because they can get so much more done in a night but that's just an off the off offhand comment all right i'm Thank done you, carol anybody else Christine's on mute. She's trying oh, to talk. Sorry. sorry, everyone. Christine Gupil, I have two things to report. Um, for those of you who have not participated in the regional plan uh, through the River Cog, they will have another presentation next Tuesday at 7 p.m. There is a video that's being posted with a PowerPoint presentation on the River Cog's website. So this is the first regional plan that is being developed through the state and then through the regions, and it's similar to our plan of conservation development for the local towns. It's being done on a regional level. So hopefully everybody can participate and provide input back to the COGS because it does impact our municipality. Um, the other thing I just wanted to bring attention to the council is that there's been some concerns about fireworks in town and sort of a lack of communication back to the community on it. And if everybody's not aware, there is a general state statute of public safety regarding fireworks. My hope is that um, we can get some information from the town manager put out there um, ASAP before the 4th of July um, comes around. 
saying that it is essentially illegal to be blowing off fireworks in your neighborhood, next to your neighbors, in your yards, et cetera. Um, so and it would be very helpful if we could have that information out there sooner rather than later and um, respond to communication from the public about this because people are very concerned. It impacts their pets. Um, there's elderly with heart conditions, et cetera. And, and I would be personally um, you know, concerned about that as well. So I would thank you for responding to the community's concerns on this. Carl, go ahead. He's not coming through. Is he there? I don't know. He, I, we couldn't hear Carl's comment. Uh, actually, an email had come to uh, town manager's office uh, over the weekend about fireworks, um, and uh, did have a conversation with Carl about the fireworks and obviously he's well aware of the state statute and the town will be putting something out uh, as it relates to that so he has already been informed of that and is well, well aware of that carl you were muted before we couldn't hear you Everybody else mute. I can't hear anybody. What happened? You there? I don't. Carl's not coming through. Lost Carl. Hey, Mary. Are you there, Tim? Yeah, he's. he's okay, I can't. Wait, hear hang you. on, Dennis. Hang on, Mary. Yes. So Carl's talking, he's off mute, but we can't hear him. He, I'm not muting him right now. He's not on mute, so I'm not sure. Yeah, he was talking before, but we couldn't hear him. So I don't know if it's yeah. just a connection. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Well, just so everybody's aware, um, the town has received some some emails in regards to the fireworks, and uh, there will be something coming out on behalf of the town as it relates to the state statute. Unfortunately, that's all we can do as a town is we can only put out there what the statute is as it relates to fireworks. Unfortunately, stopping them and preventing them is is a very difficult process because obviously the police would have to walk up on somebody while they were shooting off the firework in order for anything to happen. So that's the difficult part of that. As a town, all we can really do is try to discourage it and let them know about the state statute. So that was the conversation that I had with Carl, um, and he would be relaying that message out to the public. Um, all right, anybody else on liaison reports? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to number 11, which is the executive session. Make a motion to go into executive session and invite Carl Kilduff and Mary Shatina. Hang on a second, is this something I need to recuse myself from? I'm not sure what this is. Over here, Carl. Carl, yes, yes Carol. do I? Okay, yes, all right. Okay, I am leaving the meeting and um, I'm recusing myself and I'm leaving the meeting. Thank you, Carol. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, bye. Carol. A motion to go in executive session and invite Carl and Mary. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, at this point, Mary, we'll log off everybody. If people would like to wait for us to come out of executive session, you'll be put in a waiting room. Uh, and then when we come back on, she will uh, welcome you back into the meeting. Everyone, we are back from executive session. Um, Again, if you're not talking, if we could just go on mute to make, make it easier. Um, so no decisions were made, no votes were taken. At this point, we'll move on to number 12, which is the collective bargaining agreements. Um, and at this point, look for a motion to allow the town manager to ratify the contracts with the uh, police union and the dispatchers union. So moved. A second. Second. Was Tim. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you again. Again, thank you, Carl, for all your hard work in uh, getting this done on behalf of the town. We appreciate your uh, your work. Um, at this point, make a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you again, everyone. Everybody have a safe fourth and a happy fourth. This conference is no longer being recorded. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.